Okay, this conference will now be recorded. Okay, are we all awesome? Cecil, are we okay? Yes, we are fine. Um, okay, everything is working? The recording has started. Good. Okay, so we called the meeting to order at about 6 and the first item is to discuss what a bad budget for 2020-2021. And the purpose of the discussion is so that the RTM education ready can begin to prepare for the that they're going to give on June 8th. Can, can, um, sorry, I, I don't know if it's just, it's, it's Ed, I don't know if it's just me, but there's a tremendous feedback here. I don't know if it's because people are not muted or it's just uh, my line. No, I'm getting it too, Ed. I think we all need to mute. Okay, Clara, I'm going to unmute. Yeah, Clara, I'm you gonna, can't be muted. <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to do it as soon as other folks begin to talk. All right, so uh, Tara and Alan, would you like to give some un, some introductory remarks, or would you like us to just start with questions? What would be best for you? Did you hear me? Um, we're we're happy to say hello and some introductory remarks. It's actually so nice to see so many people. I haven't seen Carolina or Peter or Teresa in so long, and ever of you are popping up on the screen. Um, so welcome. I'm glad we could get together. We really value these conversations on the budget. It's been a difficult budget year, so the the idea that we can all talk and have a good dialogue, I think, is very important to us. Um, and also, it's another chance for you all to get to meet Dr. Adley and kind of see his educational expertise, which we have been well served um, by. And certainly, we um, appreciate all his efforts in this unique year here in Darien. But let me hand it over so you can hear from Dr. Adley himself. And then, Clara, we're happy to follow your lead and answer questions as you see uh, fit. Uh, so good evening everybody and again thank you for the opportunity uh, to come before the RTM Education Committee. Uh, it's been nice to get to know a lot of you over the year um, and, to, and to work more closely with you and uh, understand who you are and the role you play. So thank you for that. Um, so just as, I mean obviously the, the, uh, the financial landscape has changed a little bit um, since last we, we discussed the budget or, or shared some budget uh, answers and questions and answers with you. Um, and I think just the, the big the big picture sort of frames the introductory sort of discussion. Uh, we uh, came in at uh, 3.4 uh, on our budget. Um, doing that, we had to make some very uh, difficult decisions, which also included uh, laying off staff, uh, just close to, to uh, nine staff members. Uh, so it was a lean budget to start with, and we had to reduce uh, some things in that budget um, already. So since then, obviously, the world has changed. And certainly don't need to go over all of that. And uh, we understand, uh, certainly I understand uh, the need for the Board of Finance to do uh, some modifications to the budget. Uh, and I certainly am respectful of, of taxpayers. Um, uh, but the charge that we have before us at the moment, and we, we have about $470,000 accounted for um, in recommendations that I've made to the Board of Education. Uh, subsequently, we, uh, the Board of Finance has said that we need to make another reduction of about 560. Uh, so, depending on, uh, we also have like 287 that about 287 that is forecast as a deficit for next year. So, the board, uh, as we move forward here, has a deficit of of 600 to 900 thousand uh, dollars that it needs to sort of make up, um, depending on how it wants uh, to tackle that. Uh, for the last three meetings, uh, Superintendent, I have flagged that uh, should we need to go any further, we did try and review some items in the budget to come up with uh, the, the 468,000. Uh, we also deferred some capital. Um, as you know, we wanted to make a we made a recommendation to have a uh, a non lapse account established, which could be in place for several years, one year, um, an exceptional year, and have the Board of Finance have control of that. Uh, that was not uh, the desired direction to go. Uh, so that has put us on a little bit of a bind and I've uh, been signaling for the last three meetings at the Board of Education that any further cuts uh, than the ones delineated um, at the meeting and outline would impact uh, the educational programs. 
Uh, so I've been upfront about that, and that is a sort of scenario we're facing at the moment. Um, if we have to make up anywhere between 600 and 900, uh, then there are educational programs that there are going to be impacted, and I signaled uh, some of what they would be at the last uh, board meeting. I haven't outlined uh, the financials to go with those, so I can't really outline those tonight without outlining them to the board uh, next uh, Tuesday. Um, but, but this impacted every from an intramural to, to uh, talented and gifted to the music program, uh, to clubs, uh, sports. Uh, so the, uh, and even ultimately, if we had to the team and model at the middle school. Um, so until the board comes, the charge of the board will be to come uh, full circle, try to uh, address that conundrum of uh, how to do, how to meet that financial gap. And uh, that's what I look forward to engaging uh, in with the board as we move forward the next couple of weeks. Uh, so uh, for the education, your education committee, um, at the big level, but the high level view, um, you're probably aware of that to some degree or to a greater degree, but that sort of frames what we're looking at on our end. We have, and we also, I mean, the budget that was developed for this year was tight as it is. Uh, a couple of things did not float our way from uh, health insurance uh, to pensions to special education. Uh, so we have about 6% if you want to. Four to six percent is, if you want to call it discretionary, I don't call books and stuff discretionary, but uh, everything else is sort of tied up for or accounted for. Um, so we have a tough challenge ahead of ourselves over the next several weeks. Um, all right, so so that is kind of where we are at the moment. We certainly ex respect the RTM's process, so the Board of Education will do its best to understand where we are in terms of programs and cuts. Um, certainly beginning that conversation next day and realize that our final true up is certainly after any decisions you all make. Um, but we would love to engage in conversations so you guys really know where we are and what it means. Um, I think there's some concern and feeling that, that that would have been useful up front on the Board of Finance side. And so we definitely want to make sure that we engage both you and FNB so you best understand where we are at this moment in time. So Clara, I'll leave it up to you. Yeah. And okay. Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to make sure of something I heard Dr. Adley say, and I thought I read. You have a deficit beginning from based on the COVID expenses. Is that right? Uh, so we have a deficit based on some decisions that were made earlier. Um, uh, and that includes also summer school, um, a deficit of summer school of revenue of about 200,000. Um, so depending okay. on how, okay. how the board wants I, that, that's a revenue I, I, deficit. I just want to see, I saw some references to a surplus in some of the writing. So I wonder, you, you have a deficit, not a surplus. So Claire, yes. we have a surplus for this budget year. Yes. That we are projecting a deficit of revenue that impacts the coming budget because we won't that was projected as revenue that we don't believe we will collect um to offset next year's budget okay so the deficit is about next year's budget not this year's correct is that right okay okay um, I just wondered, I know that you didn't um, get to have the non-lapsing account. And um, in my kind of old experience, I remember that some surplus money a, a number of years ago was put into an account that was to be left so that if there were extra special ed expenses, the money could be spent on that. And I wondered if you all had explored an account like that. It was very specific to special ed. It was about $250,000. And the Board of Finance kind of held on to it, and the Board of Ed was able to access it if their special ed expenses exceeded what they expected them to be. And it was not called a non-lapsing account. It wasn't called anything. It was just there. And I wondered if you explored anything like that. So there is the, the special education account still exists on the town side. It has about $100,000 left in it last I looked, which was, um, couple of months ago and, and we haven't accessed it in, in, in quite a few years because we've been, done a good job managing our special education expenses. Um, 
I think the non-lapsing account is how the state statute sets up um, the preferred parameters um, for kind of schools and how they deal with that. Certainly towns can um, set up their individual accounts like we did with special ed. Chairman Zagrowski has been very clear that um, he believes that if we come back to him in the general fund, that he will um, convene a meeting and hear our request. We then certainly would go to the RTM and convene you guys in F and B, and then a full RTM vote. Um, but no, at this point, we haven't seen, um, nor did we specifically ask for um, an account like special ed for education. I think our version of that was non-lasting. It required both Board of Finance and Board of Ed approval. Um, so it's similar, but no, we did not go the same route as that special education account. And it's not, okay. uncommon, it's not uncommon for times uh, to have that sort of understanding between Board of Education or, or uh, Board of uh, Finance. Uh, where it's a total budget at the end of the year. Well, typically, the way it works is that the total budget at the end of the year uh, was not positive, particularly because of uh, special education costs. Uh, they would hold you harmless for that. That's kind of right. the way it works. But That's typically, but typically you, you may be, uh, your total budget may uh, may be positive. So so it, so, it's, so then they, 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 don't, they don't address the special education. Typically, that's what happens. Okay, um, I know that you all answered uh, a number of questions for us in January. So I wonder if we could kind of put that set of questions aside for now and see if you have questions relating to the most recent um, cuts that we see in your memo of May 12th or any of the cuts that you might have in mind. Um, does anyone have any questions about that or have any concerns or any suggestions? I can't see everybody, so I guess if you just are talking. Um sure, Claire. Claire, can okay. I can I start? This is Peter. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna turn mine off. Yeah, so, so before I go to the questions, I just want to make sure that I step back that I understand where we are in this town. Um you, Dr. Adley, and the Board of Education asked for between operating budget and capital budget for 1.5.2 million. 105.2, right? That's what the February 11th budget was approved. What was approved this week by the Board of Finance was 103.35, which is about 1.8 million difference, right? Uh, I know that you went through all the process and you said we can find savings here and there, and you ended up with still a shortfall of uh, 557,000. Now actually plus 300,000 more because of the uh, additional COVID expenses, right? Um, so. Be it as it may, you mentioned something earlier just just now that you think, yeah, you know, there's this whole discussion about it's half a percent these savings that we ask you to do. And by the way, your 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 budget that you asked for, the operating budget 103 million, was up three and a half percent only for a reason out of your control. You actually delivered budget down with less eight people down. You had 1.7 million that this body, RTM and Board of Finance, increase your cost by uh, teacher's contract. And there's additional 1.8 million of out of control costs, right? That we couldn't control, health benefit, pension, excess costs. So you actually delivered a down budget, even before all that, right? And now you ask to save additional 1.8 million. I know that you found some savings and were short, but it's not a half a percent. Right, you said the discretionary part, potential discretionary part, above what we need to deliver to the kids according to the law in the state of Connecticut, is maybe four to six percent, which translates to four to six million dollars. Right, so the savings that you have to do, and I would like to comment, is close to ten percent. Right, even before the COVID expenses. So that's that's I would like to hear your opinion on that. And I know the question is, how do we now find the six hundred thousand, even without the COVID traditional cost? Or, how do we find it? What's the process, right? I know you've been charged to find it and then come back to Board of Finance with uh, uh, with some solutions. But what is your thought process? I know you mentioned clubs. You mentioned this. I, you know, I just hope it's not going to devolve into something who screams more. You know, gonna gonna get punished less kind of thing. So, anyway, first, if you could sort of address what I said regarding these numbers as far as 10% cut to the budget, and the second is what I just. Uh, ask regarding the potential savings. 
Before you answer, I think Eliza is trying to get onto the call. Cecil, I, there's another person trying to get on. I don't know if she's on. Yes, I'm afraid that the, the uh, meeting was limited to 26 participants based on the um, invitation list, and there are 26 participants in currently. There is no way for me to increase that. Liza He's, Lucas is a member of the committee, so if someone else has to drop out, no, she's on. I, she's on. I asked. Uh, I asked somebody to drop out. Somebody dropped oh, out. Somebody dropped so out. On. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. If um, you can answer Peter's question. Okay. Uh, I think I think I understood. I heard Peter uh, correctly. Um, yes, we started out at the three point four, um, and subsequently uh, we cut. We cut out of operating. We can talk about what went into uh, capital uh, separately, uh, but we cut. But we cut out of reduced from operating another close to the five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand, um, and now the board of finance understand that we want another request of of close to, to six hundred thousand. Um, the, the budget to start with. Again, Peter, I think you know because uh, we, we were part of the discussions of, of the teacher contract and so on and so forth. The budget to start with uh, had limited flexibility in it in terms of what we could do and uh, the reductions that we even had to make then. I think it's made perhaps one of the first times the district uh, has gone through not only this level, but uh, even what we had to do for, for the budget coming up, uh, just developed uh, at the 3.4 was to make significant uh, reductions there. Um, I know even people can say just about the half percent. Um, but again, we, we have a very lean uh, budget and that was driven by significant uh, drivers that were outlined in the budget at the time and I've, I've just relayed those to you. Moving forward for these numbers, uh, I will be representing to the board or to the Board of Education on Tuesday night what my administrative recommendations would be in order to uh, realize uh, the additional savings that we need to realize. Uh, so that will be in detail and prioritized. And the board then has the, uh, the wherewithal and obviously the responsibility to look at that list um, and to uh, opine on the list and to make modifications uh, as it sees fit. Um, but there will be some things on that list that, that are going to be painful and um, uh, hard to present, but, but there will be programmatic things and educational impact uh, are going to be on that list. Uh, I can talk to them in generality uh, as much as I can share from what I shared at the last Board of Education meeting, um, but the details of, of the, 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 uh, the actual uh, finances of them, I have to wait till Tuesday night to share with the board. Um, but ultimately, the administration recommends to the Board of Education in order to get down to another $600,000, if that's what it happens to be, this is what we would do and this is how we would do it. You know, we, listen, we could also, um, I'm, just, I'm just saying to you, Peter, you're asking someone to, to plan back, we can also, uh, we're projected to have uh, at the last finance report, it was over $800,000. Uh, we have a finance subcommittee meeting that tomorrow morning, uh, which will look at that, that balance to the end of the year again. Um, but you could do things like pre-purchase some things um, if, there's a, if there's a balance that is held over. So uh, that would be uh, an opportunity that the board may or may not wish to consider. It'll be one that I'll be considering of making a recommendation. Um, since we weren't able to get a, a non-lapse account, that's, a, that's one way of uh, doing that. But ultimately, I will come forward, make the recommendations in a priority order, and then the board would uh, engage in a process of bringing that to closure. So, Peter, I think you actually very succinctly, um, and probably most succinctly, um, since, since all these discussions have put, have identified kind of the economic factors here. And the questions that now will come before the board, it was this impact we were at that the guidance was don't affect program staffing or students. The superintendent with all his experience is feeling that these cuts will do that. And now the board is gonna have to weigh those um, recommendations and make some hard decisions. And I think we were as upfront about that as we could be. And that, that will be the hard work that we will have to engage on. And I'm sure we'll, you know, continue this dialogue with this being the education committee. Let me just say this. I, I, I mentioned to Claire, and now that didn't see the floor, is is that I was somebody from Board of Finance was here too, and it didn't happen. We can have the discussion elsewhere, but I'll just say that I'm disappointed at the process that the Board of Finance 
talk here. And, um, you know, discussing over $100 million budget in a one 45 minute workout, work session, without any details, without suggesting where can be these, these savings funds, I think I find it acceptable. Now, you know, I'm gonna regret this, but the comment in a public forum that kids are insulated here in Derry and need to share this experience of COVID of belt tightening, so let's decrease the budget. It's entirely unacceptable, okay? Uh, they totally lacks understanding of role of Board of Finance, whoever said that, and the role of schools. And, uh, you know, I just hope that we all will, for that, we all will remember it next time we go to the ballot box. One more comment I have, and this is really for Board of Finance, but this is a public forum, so I hope they, they do listen to it, is that we have, we have a fund balance that in the state of, uh, state of the town in December, the chairman um, characterized as follows. Our budget balance is a rainy day emergency fund. If we ever have a major problem, you can tap it. We're quite above the ceiling required. If we have too much, it means that we're taxed too much in any given year and no, tax, and no taxing on current residents that we're not spending on, all right? So here's the numbers. We, in a, you know, because of the lapsing account and additional savings on the other side of the budget from Board of Selectmen, we will have close to 25, 26 million dollars in the, in the fund. While the ceiling required by the rating agencies and so selected by the Board of Finance is, is closer to 18 million. So we're here gonna discuss it and we're gonna cut third, third grade strength, even though it's been told that we're not gonna do that, but there's gonna be some cuts that will affect education. Um, we're discussing half a million and people will get uncomfortable when we're sitting on a six, seven million of excess. If this is not crisis, what is crisis? If, if 37% above what we are saying is the right balance amount is not enough, what is enough, right? So, I, you know, I'm, gonna have, I'm happy to have this conversation directly with the Board of Finance, but I just say I'm disappointed. And, you know, I've been complaining about rising budgets over the last couple of years, but this is not the case. This is not the case. This is the, the, dan, the hand that is dealt to the administration is not their fault. So anyway, that's just, um, that's what I thought I'm gonna throw out there for now. Okay, anybody else? Can I just add really quick? I agree with everything you just said. I don't yeah. have to <laughs> Me yeah. too. Okay. Much Me better too. said than I would do it, so. Thank okay. you, Peter. Uh, Thank maybe, you. Maybe, I did. And, and you know, maybe this is gonna be good for next year's discussion, right? Is that, and I, uh, uh, and I'm sort of thinking maybe this is what Board of Finance is trying to lead us to. And I know Dr. Adley going through it, with including Lisa uh, and others, through these priority settings, right? Where, you know, the sessions that you start, I don't know if it continues or not and all that, but maybe that we understand actually, once there are clear priorities, what are we trying to do? What is the nirvana? What are we trying to get the kids? What, what, what skills are we trying to teach them, right? That's sort of the, the perfect scenario. And then the minimum scenario is the state requirements, right? These are the two bookends and we're operating somewhere in between. And maybe, and I know you cannot have three budgets in the detail you would like to, but maybe in the next January 4th, when we sit again, you know, at, at Board of Education, you say, listen, I can do this for 99 million, but we're gonna have fewer buses. We're gonna have fewer sports. We're not gonna do these. Or oh, I can do 110 million. If the whole town wants to approve this, I'm gonna have, everybody's gonna have coding, everybody's gonna have all the priorities that we determine through this priority setting. And, you know, I'm now suggesting a kind of center tendency, right? But, but maybe that would help people to realize that there is not that much cushion, or maybe we realize that the priorities will lead us that there is a lot of cushion. Anyway, it's just, uh, just a suggestion that I, that I have up there. And, and I guess one more thing I would like you to, you know, we are all fixated on it, I'm, I, I'm fixated on this, is, security and i know that that we don't want to cut anything related to security i just would like to confirm you know that this is going to be the case it's obviously you know number one thing that teachers kids are feeling safe and you know anyway yeah peter okay the, the number one uh, uh administrative priority is always the safety uh, and security of, of the students and, and the staff and I, I will say that the board of finance certainly did not touch that. So anything that we have for uh, security is in the budget. I'll also reiterate uh, when, it, when I produced a 3.46 budget, 
that required reductions and tough decisions to be made. Uh, I tried to present the budget as difficult as it was, that was in keeping what I thought was the quality that uh, Ariane uh, community would expect um, to maintain that, uh, that high quality. But there, are, as I've said to the Board of Finance, there is no, we do not budget any um, other than budget control that you may want to, to think of it like that, um, or some people might think, like, oh, we do not budget any other, um, well, any other buffer in the budget at all. Um, so we don't, if something comes through the process, that there was a new process and if something got evaluated and we have new information, that's one thing. Um, but I don't have a, a buffer in the budget uh, uh, to draw upon. So um, that, that's, that's part of the challenge at the moment while maintaining the high level of quality excellence uh, that Derry and would, would expect. And moving forward into this next level, it's difficult. I just thought, and I'll just say again, I thought there was a, a way that we could have solved this, A, for the taxpayers, and, and two, uh, for the students, and three, for the community, um, in a mutually exclusive uh, way, or, or sorry, in a non-mutually exclusive way. There, there were a variety of, of options to solve this. You've mentioned one of them. Um, we have mentioned the other ones um, that, that, we, that, that could have helped us. I was hoping that it would have. Okay. Okay. I, I, would other people... Yeah. It's Duke Denine. Yeah. So I, I just want to say it's all you can you can hear people's passion through all this conversation, which I think is great. And that's what it has been about. A lot of passion around the education. I, I think if we take a step back and, you know, the administration did an incredible job getting to the point that they got to. And I think in all fairness to all parties involved, there's a lot of work we have to do over the next couple of weeks. And the Board of Finance has asked us to go back and look for efficiencies. And what I heard from the Board of Finance was, you know, we can go back to them and continue the dialogue about what we may see as a need going forward. We have no idea what school's gonna look like in September in terms of what we're gonna do, need to do about social distancing and personal protective equipment. We have a lot of special needs um, that we're gonna have to make up and a lot of services that we're gonna have to deliver. So there's a lot of work to do, but I think in the broad sense of doing the right thing, we need to go and look at the entire budget again and look for efficiencies and continue the dialogue. Um, that's my personal opinion, but that's what I heard from the Board of Finance. And I know as a board, we will go back and do a lot of hard work with the work that's already been done by the administration. I, I think that you have your hand up. Uh, I, I just wanted to quickly add, I agree, Duke, that you're going to have to open up the whole budget and look at it. But I certainly hope you don't decide to cut a lot of the things that are on the list that the Board of Finance created, because um, a lot of that is curriculum. And that should be the very absolute last thing ever on the table during budget cuts. I don't disagree with you. Again, I think the work has to be done and we haven't even sat down to really talk to and look at what the administration has come up with. So I, I want to be clear and I want to just be careful from engaging individual um, RTM education, individual Board of Education members in debate. Duke is right. We have a lot of work before us. Um, Teresa, I, I appreciate the comment that there, there was a list that was creative that was used in, and I'm not entirely sure and so I want to be very careful how I characterize it how it was used, but certain members certainly referred to this list as how they felt it could go. The Board of Finance doesn't have line item review, and that's because we trust um, that the educational professionals are really looking at how to work with kids. Um, Rich Rudel is here, you know, he, he, he manages the finances every day and has a handle on them. So we do, I think it actually is a culmination of Peter's comments, Teresa's, and what Duke has expressed. We had some very hard work um, in front of us, and I believe this board has always put children first, and so we will do our very best to do that within these budget constraints. Um, and, and it will not be easy, but we will do what we have, we have been charged to do. I can't see everybody again, so... If you have something to say, just start talking. Are there any other comments? No? I have one more, sorry, Claire. Um, what's interesting <laughs> on the process here is that uh, 
we as RTN or we as, as a committee, we can we can suggest not to approve this budget, but but as I understand it, it would actually mean that we would revert to last year budget, which was in absolute numbers, uh, numbers yeah. smaller. That doesn't so, doesn't solve the issue. So uh, maybe not. that's for different discussion. But but uh, I hope our our report will will clearly state, you know, uh, that this is the only reason why some of us will agree or all of us will agree. Um, I have a couple of questions myself, so interrupt me if you want to, um, you know, if someone else on the committee wants to talk. Um, one thing that um, I saw on the list prepared for the May 12th board meeting was that some of the money from the student activities accounts would be put in, given to the Board of Ed, um, you know, I guess to shore up that budget. But what would you do in that situation if the student activities accounts needed to needed the money? I mean, how would that work? Uh, well, I, well, I think the basic answer is for any students who are in need or, or uh, groups of students or categories of students that would need, need finances, we would find a way to finance. That's the basic answer. If you want to talk about the mechanics of it, you can. Sure. Um, so the two items were parking fees and gate receipts. Um, the practice of all sure. communities that collect parking fees or those parking fees are collected in the student activity account, and then the entire amount is reimbursed to the board as a contract expense. Uh, so that's that's the recommendation that we made. Um, while those items in current practice are funding things like uh, senior events, uh, it is an atypical yeah. practice for districts. Uh, we do sweep the, uh, the practice is to sweep accounts and then uh, have that swept funds go into district student activity account, and there are funds in those accounts that would be able to support those activities. So Clara, uh, your question, I think, and, and the board has not taken a final position on this. And one of the questions out there is, um, it would be a change in practice in um, due to a specific time. And do we, do we think that's wise? Um, and I, I've, heard, I've heard lots of thoughts about this. Um, I think the board needs to really debate that and come down um, on an opinion. But I think your question is, you know, what happens someday if there's no money in that account? And, um, and and you raise the point, how long, is that always going to be self-sustaining? If kids aren't allowed to drive to school, will there be money in that account? And so, so there's a long-term issue and a short-term issue, and there's also a question of whether the board is willing to change practice at this point. Um, and there's the reality of we have to find the money. So I think all those questions will be, um, you know, intelligently and thoroughly discussed um, beginning Tuesday. Okay. I mean, I guess I'm thinking from the point of view that if you let the Board of Finance know sort of the outcome of some of these cuts or, or modifications, it might be helpful to them to understand that, um, you know, it might involve uh, personnel changes. It might involve, I mean, for example, I was just looking through my budget stuff and I was thinking, well, how has the, how have the, um, English as a second language students done during this at home learning. I mean, is that something that could cost an enormous amount of money to try to replicate the service that's being given that would have been given in a school in a home? And, you know, there are so many uncertainties here um, that I, I just wonder if I mean, it's almost as though you need unallocated funds because you're not necessarily going to spend the money the same way you expected to spend it. So yeah, the issue of compensatory services has come up. Um, it will be one we struggle with. There are some, and we've discussed, you know, the unknown unknowns. Um, there are some that, that there's no way of knowing, and there are some that we can reasonably predict. Um, and that's why some flexibility in the budget might have been a way to go. Um, this, as Dr. Adley said, was already a lean budget, and um, it will be reduced. We, we would, Are there any other? We saw large expenses at that point. We would be going back to the Board of Finance for an additional appropriation, which they have signaled they are willing to hear those requests. Right, they have. But that would have to go through the RTM and the process, right? It's not just a matter of them giving you the money, right? No, it would go through a full. Um, my understanding, yes, is. Any appropriation that the Board of Finance did not take out of their own contingency account would go through the full appropriation and approval process with all associated timelines. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, are there any other folks on the Education Committee who would like to comment? As I said, I can't see everybody. So I just so, have a quick question. I, um, it's Carolina, Clara. Um, good. In my accent by now, but. <laughs> well, I see you. Actually, I can see you, so I know, I know. So I know uh, Dr. Adley mentioned at the beginning, or at some point today, um, that the surplus that we have in the budget this year, um, and I see the paperwork for tomorrow, which I see right now is 923. Um, so we would maybe, or they would maybe start analyzing stuff that they could start using with that surplus. Ha do they have any idea of what would they start? Uh, the answer is yes, I would have an idea. Um, I prefer to tell that to the Board of Education first yeah. of all. But, but okay. yes, that's, that's now, in fairness to you, we're trying to sort of uh, get a sense of the magnitude of perhaps com compensatory services, services for other students who have fallen behind, such as ELL students and other things that we need to do. We just, we literally just this afternoon now received guidelines about um, uh, summer schools and uh, like basically the, the, like 18 to a bus um, and like so we're, we're we've got other expenses that we know of and others that are that are becoming apparent uh, that we have to plan for uh, so so that 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 fund could be used typically it can be returned to the town to to help with next year or offset you, you can we can purchase uh, uh, things with that uh, if we need to do so. It's not as if we can't do that statutorily. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question, Alina? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Thanks. Anyone else? Well, I have one more question about this whole going back to the Board of Finance, the way they asking for it. Um, so yeah, the way they're suggesting is that you will come back, you'll look through it. As, uh, as Duke said, come up, come up with something. So I just want to play this through, right, uh, and, and see how they're actually deciding individual items that, that I don't think they should be. Because if you come back and you, you, know, and you say, no, I cannot make any further cuts, how, do, how does this play further, right? They, they say, go back again, find us 100,000, and then you have to, and they approve certain things. I mean, when do you make this, uh, when do you go back to them, right? It's just, I mean, it's an appropriate function of Board of Finance to decide these line items. I know they'll say we're not deciding line items, but by effectively asking you to come back is deciding the line items. So I, I do see... Where will this process happen? Is it, is it once before, or how does it not play out? So I, I do think the concern you raise has been raised by others. Um, I think, you know, I, I have to, Chairman Zagrowski, at his word, that he, he would see the meeting and hear our concerns. I know there was one member who said they were looking to approve solely COVID-related expenses, and, and so, so that's concerning because, you know, that, that starts to be how you define things. Um, I, I think what I can say is this. I believe in our administration. I believe they went through a full and thorough process to try to meet the challenge before them. Um, I think the Board of Finance also has a goal, and it seems somewhere between the betwixt and the between, um, we've ended up in this situation. So I believe Chairman Zagrowski will hear us. I am concerned that is weighing in on line item, items. I think there are other things like the unknown unknowns that we could never know that are related to COVID that it is fair to go back to them for. Um, but I do believe, I think the comment was that like, you need to give it a real try and scrub. And I, I think that the administration did that, um, but we are where we are. And so we have to move forward. Um, you know, I think, I think concerns have been raised, but the reality of now we need to find the cut. And so um, we, we will do it. I don't think it's where any of the nine of us would choose to be, but I think it's where all of the nine of us are dedicated to doing the best we can with um, the situation that we have before us. I, I, I respect the Board of Finance's uh, offer, the uh, good faith offer. I'll just say in my own practical experience, going through back and forward for these things, uh, 
A, if cumbersome, sometimes doesn't work. Um, uh, and timing of things also gets impacted. Uh, I just have felt that there's a, there's a cleaner way to do it. But that being said, uh, I appreciate their offer and consideration to, to hear us again. And have there been any discussions with Board of Finance, workshop, anything between February 11th? And I know then what happened in March and people worried about other stuff, but have there been any discussions, uh, you know, eye to eye about, about this budget between you and, uh, and Board of uh, Finance? We made a presentation at the budget handover, and that was the last presentation we made to the Board of Finance until we requested. Um, there was a workshop that had that that had um, the nature, the tradition of which had changed on uh, Tuesday. That I want to make sure I did twelve change, so we did not attend that. I think all of the board asked me to request that we be included on the Thursday meeting, which was the fourteenth. Um, and so what you saw was our last formal conversation with the Board of Finance since the budget handover. Okay. Are there any other um, Education Committee me members who want to talk? Okay. Would it be fair to say we're not going to vote on this tonight? Okay. We're going to have to wait unless uh, anyone has any other comments to make. I think we could move on to the next item on the agenda, which is a brief report on the Ox Ridge project. Is that okay with everybody? Does anybody object to doing that? To Duke Deneen because he is the vice chairman of the Board of Education and also the chairman of the town Ox Ridge building committee. So he's probably the best one to update you on that. Duke? Thanks, okay, Tara. Duke. No, thanks, Clara. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you on a, a nice night. Um, so we have a, a regularly scheduled meeting tomorrow, and where we're where we are at after several meetings over the last couple of weeks is we are done with the design development phase. So we have a school. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, we're moving into the cost estimating phase. Um, that has been a significant project, and as we've gone through that. We've gotten some feedback from parents and folks in the community about um, taking down part of the school, uh, concerns about what schools are gonna look like from a COVID perspective. And as we've gone through a value management exercise, we've come up with a different facing project uh, that we're working through right now. So I'll touch base on that in a minute. We, uh, we have been through the EPC, uh, we're okay there. Uh, we've been through ARB, uh, Architectural Review Board, which was a good meeting. We've had our first planning and zoning meeting, uh, which was a good meeting. We're headed shortly to a second planning and zoning meeting. So all the uh, regulatory and local state meetings have taken place. We're also working on, uh, with the state, scheduling the next series of design development and review meetings with the state construction authority um, and bonding group there that gives us some reimbursement on the project. Um, Dr. Adley participates in, in all these meetings and uh, Dr. Fosh, Forshaw, Luke Forshaw, the uh, principal at Oxridge participates also. Um, so we've got a really good building committee. So where we were headed was phase one would demolish some of the existing school we would have to rearrange some classrooms, bring in a portable to get the whole new school built. Um, after going back and looking at some uh, value management ideas, getting some feedback around COVID and how schools may change for September, uh, a different phasing project has come up where we will leave the existing school intact as it is and no changes to the existing school. So I think that will help in terms of what people are gonna come into in September in terms of going back to school. It may look very different with respect to COVID and things we have to do, but it will be the school that they left uh, this year. Um, we will go and build the academic wing of the school first, um, and then move the students into the academic wing probably after Christmas break or during February break of 2022, um, start to demo some of the old school and um, build the wing that has the gymnasium, uh, music, art, and the cafeteria. So 
the administration has been great in looking at ways to accommodate not having a cafeteria and a gym as we move kids into the new academic wing. Um, so there's a lot of discussion around that and how that would look, but we think it's something that we can do. So that's at a high level of building and the phasing. As part of the next phase in design development and going through the costs, we are about $7.9 million over budget of the original $63 million uh, that was requested. Now, if you recall, going back to the original meeting, we were kind of backed into going and requesting and getting that funding based on the state process for getting documents in for a grant. So that was a very high level estimate uh, that we went through while we were going through the process of interviewing architects and also construction firms. Um, we are committed to getting as close to or below that $63 million budget and the architects and the construction team that we're working with are also. We spent about four hours yesterday going line by line on value management um, areas that we're going to look at. Um, you know, um, everything from window blinds to um, mechanical equipment and different things like that. So there's some significant things that uh, will make a difference from a cost standpoint. So we're kind of going through that process now. And tomorrow's meeting, we will actually bring to the table a part of what we've gone through on the value management. There's also some stuff now that they've gone through an official estimating stage um, that they've come back with a change in some pricing. They're calling that a scope change, which has helped the overall budget too. So we're working on bringing that down and more in line with our goal of the original budget request. So I'll pause there. I, I said a lot in a short period of time and happy to answer any questions. And as I said, Dr. Adley's been part of this uh, since day one also, and has been a tremendous asset because of also his relationship with the state. So if I could just piggyback uh, uh, what Mr. Deneen spoke about, one of the biggest advent, uh, advantages to this is, is that children will not be disrupted next year, so they will be in uh, the full school building. We don't have to get the additional portables. This, this building is going to be spectacular. Um, the two-story building, the, the courtyard design, uh, all the ELP uh, being, being in the one building, uh, some of the big spaces are just, just the teaching and learning has been really thought through um, from the library spaces to the cafeteria spaces uh, to gymnasium spaces. Um, just it, It's just going to be a, a tremendous uh, building. Uh, it's developed sort of in pods a little bit and um, the classroom sort of roll out into the hallways, uh, which is a new teaching and learning um, uh, expectation, um, uh, something that, that I think will be very well received, most importantly, by the children. Um, and then the security of the building is is, is really top notch, uh, first class. Okay. Which, of course, does, can't really do <laughs> Okay, so does anyone have any questions in particular about the impact of the COVID? development, I mean, on the building itself, it sounds as though you, you were all set with a beautiful building, everything was working out. Is there, would you make any changes based on what you know now about social distancing or any of the possible changes in the way classrooms might have to be set up? Have you all discussed anything like that? Yes, well, so go ahead, Alan. No, go ahead, sir. No, uh, the good news is SLAM uh, it works with the state and has participated in, in meetings and they're developing white papers on this. And we ask that pointed question and they feel we are at a, a good place with the size of the school, the size of the classrooms, what we do in town in terms of enrollment. So um, we asked that question and no real changes came out of that question with how the school is designed right now. We feel... Um, you know, depending on ELP enrollment and, you know, people may be coming back into the district based on economics and costs of private schools that um, we, we've done the right thing and, and actually will wind up with some flex space, which I think will not just help that school, but may help the overall district. So I think that's an interesting point, which came up in OPC today, both um, Mrs. Stevenson, Mr. Obani, who runs PMZ, and I all um, commented and heard that the, these articles were all being on uh, urban to suburban 
um, flight and move is real and Darianne is experiencing. Um, that has different impacts for all of our departments and what we manage, but from a school side, um, we start to look at what that might mean in terms of increased enrollment. And it's the very reason why you build, you build flex space. And I think that the, that the committee um, under Kip and Duke's leadership really deserves, um, and, and I will say in those ed specs that, that were developed, I think by a strong administration and, and approved by a board, that, that is essential because you have moments like this, Clara, to your point about COVID, that changes. And while we were looking at downturns in um, enrollment, there is enough anecdotal um, information at this point to suggest that we may see um, a bubble up in enrollment yeah. over the next few years. So that is why we do this. That is, that is why I commend the building committee for taking seriously the request for flex space and um, getting this school built well and right um, will be a real benefit to the town of Darien. Perhaps Thank not, you. Your, not your direct question, Clara, um, but an indirect uh, benefit of what you would do differently is kind of what they're doing. Um, making, because, because even the opening of next year is up in the air, um, the decision to go to phase one and just phase two, where the children stay in the building, um, and not have to move around. It's going to be really helpful uh, to anything that we have to do for COVID uh, guidelines, um, as opposed to more portables, disruptions, moving them around. Um, at least they'll be in their, their common habitat and, uh, and we can make the accommodations that we need to make. Okay, thank you. Clara, Clara I know Peter brought this up in the broader conversation about security and just I think just it's important to mention that there is a specific security committee that's met several times. Mrs. Ackman, Dr. Adley, myself have participated in that with the chief of police, a representative from the state insurance, Kerma. Um, you know, so a lot of conversation um, and a, a consultant that uh, SLAM and the architects have brought on board too. So we've had good conversation around security, everything from access to glass to line of sight to where bushes are planted. Um, so I think it's been a very thorough conversation and I think we're at a good place from a security standpoint and, and that is and always will be a priority. Thank you. Did you have uh, the rest, is there a, an, another aspect to your presentation, Duke? That's it, unless you have any more questions or if there's any additional information you can think of. Okay, does anybody have a question for Duke or? Because I, I, I can only see some of you, so. Start talking if you have a question. I have a question, Duke. When uh, when do you expect to go to RTM for the uh, additional funds? I guess we've approved 63 million. How, now how much would you expect? You know, it's somewhere between 63 and 71. How much would you expect to come for? So our goal is, and I would like to say, we're not going to come see you for more money. <laughs> but I, I appreciate the question, Peter. I think we've probably got a good month or so of work ahead of us before we see where the numbers land and then come back in maybe this type of format to provide a little more update and even um, some design and whatever else you feel you all may want to see as a committee i think that would be important um, look we want to build the right school so we know the town is committed to that and we're not going to value engineer it um, you know, that's why we keep calling it value management. So if we understand what we need to build the right school and have to come back to you to have that conversation with the facts, we will do that. We're just not there yet. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Okay, if we could just go back to the budget, um, Tara and um, the board members and Dr. Adley, um, Going forward from now till say the time that you meet and talk about what modifications you might have in mind, is there anything that the education committee could do to help you or to provide the information that they're hearing from the community? Um, so I mean, we always value input in what you're hearing from the community. I mean, I think you know you certainly represent your districts and um, voters. I think we we also try as elected officials to put ourselves out there. We've created 
um, and even a whole new folder that all Board of Education members receive public comment at the same time. So, so to encourage people, we'd like to hear their voices. Um, if you could encourage them that we know we're making hard choices, um, that would be nice too, um, because I think, I think we're all in a new moment in time and trying our best to do the right thing. Um, I think, you know, we look forward to a continued dialogue. I think if you look at the growth of the Board of Education, the Education Committee, over the last few years, we've done nothing but really um, pushed each other to work well and work better and consider new ideas. So, you know, we look forward to that. Certainly, we would ask that you um, support what's left of our budget and don't cut further. Um, and because, you know, I understand the RTM has the right to cut, but we would ask that you support our budget as it is um, and that we don't experience deeper cuts. But I think, you know, any, any member through Clara can certainly reach out. Any member, you know, however, Clara, you best define you'd like your members' voices to be heard or their constituent voices to be heard. We welcome that opportunity. Okay. Well, we did not, we didn't revisit the January questions because you all did answer many of them. I know some people had interest in additional information, but some of the priorities have changed since then. So I guess for the Education Committee, if you still have questions about anything, and in particular, the January, February questions that maybe you felt were not answered and are still a priority, let me know and I will forward the questions to Tara, if that's okay with you. I don't think we have any other business tonight. Is there anyone who has something they'd like to talk about or comment on? I, I think that we're gonna meet again and I think that maybe at that meeting we'll, we'll vote, but we'll, I think be keeping track of what the Board of Ed does next week and um, see how things are going. Um, so if there are no other comments or questions, I think we could have a motion to adjourn. It's six, it's almost seven o'clock. Okay, Teresa and uh, Carolina. Okay, thank you everybody for coming out and um, we'll certainly- Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night, okay. everybody. Thank you, good night. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.